Now let's go ahead and see that how we can display different weather information on our screen. We already have access to the store and anytime we're going to add a new weather to the store, it's going to fire a notification, which means that our weather list screen can subscribe to it and get changed. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I am using the weather list, which is inside the store object. So I can say store dot weather list, which contains instances of weather view model. I'm going to go ahead and change this into an ID. Even though we don't really have an ID property on the weather view model, we can go ahead and add that. The ID property is going to make sure that all the displaying information inside the list is actually unique based on the ID. So let ID equals to UUID, and we're simply going to go ahead and assign it a constant ID. Now going back over here, we can make sure that we will refer to the index by using weather. And instead of the text, we can use weather cell, which we have already created. And in the weather cell, we can go ahead and pass in the weather. The weather cell is not really expecting any weather, but that's not a big deal. We can go ahead and change the weather cell to accommodate that. We can say that the weather cell if you need to create it, you should pass in the weather view model. Right now you can see that we are displaying some hard-coded information like Houston, Sunrise, and all those things. We can change that by injecting the real value of the city by saying weather.city. We can inject the real value of the sunrise which in this case is system name is coming from sunrise, but the date is just some hard-coded date. So we can change that to weather.sunrise. Same exact thing we can do with the sunset. Right now, we're just picking the date. We can go ahead and get the date from the actual variable, which is the weather, which is weather view model. There we go. And for the most important part, which is the temperature, which is highlighted over here, you can see that we are simply displaying the temperature as 72. We can change all of this stuff. So I can go ahead and I can possibly say over here that I'm going to go ahead and display weather.temperature. Now let's go ahead and build this. Now this builds out correctly. One other thing we can do over here is that we can make sure that the temperature in this case is always an int. So I can go ahead and wrap this inside an int and try to convert it. Great. Let's go ahead and run our application and see if we can add a new weather. Right now, if you run the application, it shouldn't really display you anything because we have removed the hard coded loop which was displaying item from 1 to 10. Let's go ahead and run it and try to go ahead and add a weather. I'm going to go ahead and type Houston. And there we go. It actually does add the weather. The temperature is in Kelvin. Now, it will be a good idea to possibly say that it is in Kelvin. So I can go back to my text where I'm displaying everything and I can. Go ahead and say K for Kelvin. Let's go ahead and do it again. I'm going to go and add Houston. There we go. And I can go ahead and add other things also. So I can go ahead and say Seattle. Okay. Another thing that will be interesting to add will be an image. Right now it's 291 Kelvin and 275 Kelvin. Obviously, we want to display Celsius and Fahrenheit. We'll go to that later. We get the sunrise and sunset, which is perfect. But what we also want to do is to display some sort of an image, which is going to tell us that whether it is cloudy, it's sunshine, and things like that. So I'm going to go back over here after the spacer that we have 
And inside over here, I'm going to go ahead and use a URL image. This is our own custom view that we have created. And it's going to take in a URL. I'm going to go ahead and pass in constants.urls.weather URL as string by icon and pass in the icon, which is weather.icon. You can also give some sort of a frame, like a width and a height to the icon. So I can go ahead and say icon will be 50 and height will be 50. Let's go ahead and run the application again. And this time I'm going to again start with Houston. Save. And you can see that it was a little bit delay and you can see the white uh, placeholder that was appearing. Now you can change the placeholder to be clear, which we'll do later, but the placeholder and all of that information is right over here inside the loader, actually inside the view, URL image. You can see that if the image is taking some time to load, then we simply replace it with the placeholder. Okay. Let's go and add some other cities. I'm going to go ahead and say Austin. And you can see it's a little bit more cloudy over there. How about Denver? Usually Denver is sunny. Oh, it's actually kind of sunny and raining. So you can see that we are now also able to find out the actual uh, icon. And we were able to fetch the icon and display the icon. We can go ahead and add more cities if you want. We can go ahead and add Dallas. And there we go. I'm not sure which city will have a little bit of sun. It's too early for sun, I think. But here we go. Mexico City has sun. Once again, you can see for a split second that there was a white icon over here or a white space over here before the actual image was loading. That is a placeholder image inside the assets file. And here it is. You can replace it with anything that you want, basically. Um, we can also try to do other stuff with it. Uh, if you're using the placeholder, we can go ahead and set it to the frame size of width to be zero and height to be zero and see if that actually allows us to completely remove the placeholder. But I guess in this case, you can see that the function is now removing or, you know, giving you different values. So maybe you shouldn't use that. Maybe you should just play around with the placeholder itself, meaning that the placeholder image right over here, I'm just using a white image, which means that this white image is going to appear when something is loading. Uh, you can use a loading sign for that. That will be perfectly fine. And I'm going to show you how you can do that. Either use a loading sign or you can simply go ahead and use like a clear image, a transparent kind of an image, so it doesn't look bad when the things are getting loaded. All right. So there you have it. We were able to display all the cities. We were able to add the cities and also look at the weather of those cities, which is awesome. One problem that you see right now is that the weather is in Kelvin, 274 Kelvin. Depending on the area that you live in, I'm in US, so we deal with Fahrenheit weather. If you are in a different country, if you are in a, you know South Asia, or I think if you're also in, uh, you know, European country, then you may be dealing with Celsius. So how can we allow the user to change this temperature from Kelvin to Fahrenheit, from Fahrenheit to Kelvin to Celsius? This is going to be done in the settings screen. So in the next section, we're going to look into how can we construct that settings screen? How can we persist that information, the selected temperature unit in the app storage, which basically means into user defaults. So we're going to be doing a lot of cool stuff. Stay tuned for that.